In this video, I'll show you how you can create a new search bar in Jetpack Compose. And along the way, I'm going to show you a bunch of interesting and important details that you need to be aware of. By the end of the video, you will get everything you need to know around search bar in Compose. Let's go. Before we look into the code, this is what we are going to build. So here I have a list of cities and a search on top. Now, when I activate it, I want you to pay attention to this nice animation that's happening. And then here I can type name of a city or part of the name of the city or the continent where the city belongs. So if I type Europe, all the cities inside Europe are going to be listed. And if I search for something that does not exist, it's going to show an empty view. Now let's go ahead and dive into the code to see how we have made this implementation. First, we're going to start from the preview. Inside, I am remembering a state that initially takes in some hard-coded cities. And then I am calling the screen where I'm passing down the state. And then on search query update, I am updating the state with the query that comes in. Next, the city is represented by a data class that has name and the continent where the city is located. Ultimately, I got the screen state data class that represents the state. It takes in search query and list of cities. And for convenience inside, I've created additional property, filtered cities, that goes through the cities and filters out the ones where the name or the continent contains the search query. And that's everything around the data and the states. We try to keep the things simple for this example. Now let's look into the composables, how the things are implemented. I got this private composable cities list that takes in modifier cities and on city selected. So the cities are clickable, we can click on them. And then inside I have a lazy column where I'm passing down the modifier. Inside the lazy column, I'm only calling the items function where I'm passing down the cities. And then for each city, I'm calling the list item composable, which is the first interesting and important thing that you have to be aware of. This list item is a composable that is part of the standard Android Text Compose Material 3. And in general, it is a composable that is underutilized from people, maybe something that you need to be aware of. So you can, instead of building your own list items, you can utilize that one. Inside, I'm only passing modifier to make it clickable. And then on click, I'm calling the on city selected. Next, I'm applying colors, which allows me to change a bunch of different colors around the list item itself. As we can see from this API, we can change many different colors around the list item. Next, I apply headline content, which is just a text composable where I'm passing down the city name and I apply some styling around the text. And ultimately, the supporting content, which is also a text, where I'm passing the city continent and also changing the color and style of the text. Additionally, what's interesting and important about the list item composable is its slot API, where we can pass overline content, leading content, trailing content. So basically, you can customize the list item the way we need, particularly. So this is very rich API. And instead of building our own list item, we can utilize this one. All right, that's all about the cities list. And as we'll see, I'm reusing this composable for both the regular list and the list inside a search later on. Next, let's look into the custom search bar. Here, I'm also taking in the state and I expose two callbacks on query update and on city selected so that inside a search, we can also click on city because that's a search result. So we should be able to do something when we click on particular search result. Inside, I remember if the search is expanded or not, and maybe this is something you want to hoist elsewhere, perhaps in the state itself. And then I've defined search bar padding, which is an animation that animates between zero and up size normal. And in fact, it is this exact animation that makes the padding from being padded like this to expand across the whole available size. And maybe the animation on this emulator doesn't look very sleek, but on a real device, it is really fire. Then I'm calling the search bar composable, which comes in the Compose SDK. And there I'm passing a modifier that changes the padding that we are animating. I'm passing a shape that makes it circular so that the sides of this view are rounded perfectly. And if I change this to container, for example, and by the way, these are shapes that I've defined inside my team, we can see on the right side in the preview, how does it change the edges? So let me put this back to circular as it was before. Next, I'm passing down colors. And with these colors, I can change the container color and the divider color. In fact, here I have made the divider transparent. But if I put something like red, for example, we aren't going to see anything when the search bar is collapsed. 
But if I expand it, so if I change the value here to true, then we can see that divider. So it's the divider between the search bar and the actual results. And by applying the divider color here, we can change its color. I'm gonna set it back to transparent. Or if you want, you can also apply here unspecified. That's also going to work and it's not gonna put any color there. And then I'm gonna put this back to false. The container color on the other side is the color of the container. So this light pink color. If I change this to, let's say, color black, we'll see better what actually changes. So that's the container color. Next, I'm specifying input field, and the input field is the field that is inside this container. So let's look into that. And since this is a composable, I can pretty much supply anything I want here. So I can still reuse the search bar, but apply anything that I want. Doesn't have to be something that comes from Compose SDK. In this case, I do supply search bar defaults.input field, which is a composable that is built in. And that input field takes in query that comes from the state. It takes in on query change, which is equal to the on query update callback that we are having on the root custom search bar composable. On search is the callback that is being called when the user clicks on the search button on the keyboard. So here, if I open the search, this button, when it's being hit, we are getting this callback being called. But because in this case, I don't have anything to do when that search happens, I left its Lambda empty. But if you are building an application that is going to trigger search only when the user clicks that button, then you can utilize this callback. Next, we've got colors for the input field. And then inside, we can change also a bunch of different colors. If you take a look, it has very rich APIs. We can change many, many, many things inside here. For the time being, I'm applying cursor color and some other colors for the text and the placeholder. Then we have leading icon. As you can predict, the leading icon is this search here. Inside, I'm passing an icon button. This icon button takes on click. And then what happens on click is that I'm going to check if the search bar is expanded. So when the user clicks, if we are expanded, I'm going to clean the query because we are just about to collapse. So we are going to clean up the query that was there before. And then we are going to change or toggle the is search expanded to different than is search expanded. And that's what happens on click. And then as a content on this icon button, first I define an icon. So if we are expanded, I'm going to show arrow back. Otherwise, this search that we are seeing now. Then I define content description, which also changes based on whether we are expanded or not. And finally, I call an icon where I'm passing down the image vector, the content description, and also a tint. Back to the emulator, as we can see initially, the button is search. And if I click, it becomes expanded. And then the button becomes an arrow. And if I type something, the query comes in here. But if I click now, it both clears the query and changes back the icon to search. So that's what happens with that leading icon. And now let's take a look into the placeholder. The placeholder is also a text, and as a text, I'm just passing down search cities, and I'm changing the style. Nothing special here. Next, the input field takes in expanded, and on expanded change, that changes that value is search expanded. While here, I would like to show you that this input field also takes in trailing composable. So here we have leading icon, and it also takes in this trailing icon. What I would encourage you to do is find link to this code in the description below, check it out, and then utilize this trailing icon to apply an overflow menu on this search bar. So on the right side here, we are going to have an overflow menu similar to these three dots here, and then you can add some additional options there. Maybe you can add some options about sorting of this list alphabetically or whatever you prefer. So that's all about the input field. And then moving on, the search bar also takes in expanded and on expanded change, which is same here. In this example, I have the same implementation. It is important to distinguish between the two because this one is input field. So here we have supplied search bar defaults input field. And that one is different than the expanded and on expanded change on the actual search bar, which is the whole container. So this is only for the input field, and that's essentially the difference between those two. And finally, we have to look into the content of the search bar, and the content is what appears when the search bar expands. So what's that thing that we are seeing when the search bar is expanded underneath it or below? In this case, I'm using a box that expands itself across the whole available size. And I'm going to tell you just in a bit why do I use box here. Inside, I'm rendering the cities list 
which in this case takes in the modifier, but as cities, I'm passing the state filtered cities, which is important difference compared to all the cities. And then on city selected, I'm just calling the on city selected callback that is coming here in the custom search bar. Next, I'm having an if that checks if the filtered cities is empty. And in that case, I'm rendering a text that aligns itself to the center of the screen. And it says no matching cities. And that's why I'm using box here, basically. I'm going to render the cities list. And then this one comes on top. So the cities and then this one is on top. Now, more or less, those are all the important things around the search bar. Additionally, you have to be aware that here we can also apply shadow if we want to. So shadow elevation, that's going to add a little bit of shadow for the search bar, which might be something you want to apply. And additionally, you have to be aware of the window insets. And these window insets are especially handy when you are supporting edge to edge. And now that you will have to also support or target 36 and up, these are going to be very handy to use. Finally, let's take a look at the screen with search bar composable, which is the root composable that represents the entire screen. It takes in the state and on search query update callback. And then inside, I'm using the scaffold composable where I'm changing the container color to a color that comes from my theme. And then as a top bar, I'm just calling my custom search bar composable that we just looked into. I'm passing to it the state on query update and on city selected. And then I'm just printing out here the selected city. But if I want to do something with it, like navigate or whatever, I'm having the city itself and then I can navigate to, let's say, details. Then as a content, again, I'm using a box. I am making it expand across all the available size, passing down the inner padding and then calling the cities list. Again, passing down the state cities. So here I'm passing all the cities. And if you remember in the custom search bar composable, we were using the filtered cities property. And then on city selected, I'm printing the selected city. Again, here I'm using a box so that it's going to allow me to add error states, loading if I want to, and so on and so forth. Now that's it. I hope this video makes it easier for you to create and use search bars in the future. If you want to get more such interesting things, find a link below this video and check it out.